My name is Janina. I'm an iOS developer from Amsterdam. And today, I will talk to you about the performance implications of drawing UI through some common techniques in iOS. So there are numerous different ways to draw some of the most common UI elements, like text, shadows, rounded corners. And if you go online, you'll find lots of opinions as to which method is the best or most performant. Uh, there are trade-offs uh, about usability or performance. Well, I'm not going to add another opinion to the mix. Instead, today we're going to discuss common approaches to drawing UI, how they differ, and then we will look at actual numbers of performance uh, on real device. As I've done the grunt work for you. So, but first, a little bit of theory on the rendering stack. Hardware is the foundation uh, of everything. So we have the display hardware and then the GPU and the CPU. So the GPU is responsible for drawing everything on the screen, and the CPU is responsible for logic and calculations. So then we have the kind of lower level frameworks like core graphics and core animation. Core animation does all of its work in the GPU, and core graphics goes through the CPU. And ultimately, the GPU receives a set of textures that then composites and draws to the screen. And above all are high-level frameworks like UI kits that are blissfully unaware of anything that's going on below them. Uh, so let's start with text. There are so many different ways to draw text. It seems like something that should be straightforward, yet on Stack Overflow right now, there are more than 800 questions that mention text and iOS. Even more if you take into consideration any that mention labels and performance. So maybe it's not quite so simple. Why there are so many different ways? How do they differ? So today we'll cover five different approaches. Uh, the label, text view, text layer, core text, and text kit. Uh, so let's start with UI label. Uh, so if performance is not in consideration, this is the most straightforward way to draw text. It has a rich API, and why would you ever use anything else if you're not worried about performance? So basic stuff, nothing to dwell on. Uh, and text view is another UI kit element uh, because it's part of a higher level framework like UI kit. It comes with some overhead. Uh, then we have the text layer. So every view is backed by a CA layer, and that's ultimately what the GPU treats as a texture. There are different types of layers like uh, text layers, shape layers, gradient layers, etc. And their APIs are actually quite feature rich. So the text layer, for instance, supports attributed text and has a lot of features that even UI label doesn't. Uh, and then we have Core Text, which is a framework that operates on top of Core Graphics. It's less user-friendly than CA Layer and UI Label, and you have to do a lot more things yourself, like text positioning. But on the other hand, it gives you complete control over how text is drawn. And then there's TextKit. So TextKit includes such classes as NS Storage, NS Text Storage, NS Text Layout, and NS Text Container. Uh, if you're not too familiar with text kits, I found this picture online that describes it better than I could. Uh, so on the bottom left, we have text storage. So that's the object that contains all your text and the attributes you want to apply. In the bottom left, we have the text container. And that is, bottom right, we have the text container. And that is going to be the shape of the text that we want to draw. And then the layout manager in the top left takes the text out of the text storage and stuffs it into the container. Uh, and then top right, we have text view. So the text kit components can operate on their own, uh, but text view also has support to run with text container. So that actually makes the text view a really powerful uh, element because not only uh, does it scroll and is it editable, but it's also highly customizable in terms of uh, text richness and shapes. So back to the text kit example. Um, so I found this uh, in a class. Um, this is a class I found on GitHub that claims to be faster than UI label. It overrides the draw method, uh, like the core text approach did, uh, and it uses the layout manager to actually draw the glyphs. Um, so those were the approaches. Uh, now let's look at the actual numbers. Um, first, let me tell you how I measured performance. Uh, I only cared about execution time of getting each of these elements onto the screen. Uh, I ran my test on iPhone 10 running iOS 11. Uh, I ran a test between 10 and 30 times, depending on the diversity of the results. And then I discarded the obvious outliers and averaged out the results. Um, and 
uh, just a reminder, always test on the device instead of the simulator, because if you use the simulator, you'll be measuring your computer's resources. Um, so, but the numbers will vary across devices and across iOS versions, and even based on the state that your device is in. So take the numbers you will see with a bit of a grain of salt. Um, the exact values are not as important as how each approach compares to each other. And as I said, there's so many factors to take into consideration. So I thought it'd be useful to start with a baseline measurement of drawing a single UI view with a solid background color onto the screen. And that measured in at 0.88 uh, milliseconds. So and here are the results for drawing text. So UI text, you came in at a huge 27 milliseconds. UI label was six times faster with 4.39. Uh, then text kits, then text layer, and then the fastest was core text. So these results make sense because, as I already mentioned, UI kit components come with a lot of overhead from being in a higher level framework. Uh, in fact, let's get rid of the text view uh, and compare all the results, the, the rest of the results to each other. So UI label was more than uh, took more than twice as long as core text, and it was significantly slower than text layer. And text kit came out somewhere in the middle. And one more thing about text layer, while it's a performant component, it doesn't feel very nice to mix up layers and views in your code. Um, so I thought, what if you add a text layer to a view and use that view? So that came in at 4.25 milliseconds. And as I said, label was 4.39. So using a, a text layer wrapped in a view is not really much of a win. Um, so now let's talk about rounded corners. Oh, actually, no. first. Let's do a quick meditation exercise. Everybody, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, yep. Uh, imagine you're in a beautiful green field. In your hand is your phone. You hear the soft buzz of the taptic feedback, the gentle ring of push notifications. You open your favorite app. It's probably Twitter. Try to picture all the small details on the page you're on the buttons, the images. Navigate to another screen and examine it as well. Now open your eyes. W uh, what did the app look like? Was there a single screen in the app that did not have a rounded corner somewhere? Rounded corners are such a staple visual effect, so why do standard UI kit elements not have a more straightforward support for them? All right, I guess we will have to do the hard work ourselves. So I will show you three ways to do rounded corners. Two of them will involve a CA layer, and one will involve core graphics. So first way is to just set the corner radius on the layer and apply a mask to bound uh, fil um, flag. Or alternatively, you can set clips to bounds. So functionally, clips to bounds and mask to bounds are effectively the same. One's a method on the layer, one's on the view. Um, also, rather than uh, telling the layer to infer the mask, you can provide the mask as a mask layer. Uh, so its shape will be then specified however you want, maybe through a Bezier path like I did. Um, or rather than going through layers, you can use core graphics, uh, create a sub view, override its draw rect method, and draw the shape directly. So in this case, you'll be dealing with the graphic context and its API. So in terms of performance time, uh, core graphics approach was a little bit slower than the rest, with 2.4 milliseconds. Then CA layer plus clips to bounds. Then CA layer plus mask. Then CA layer plus masks to bounds. So in regards to clips to bounds versus masks to bounds, the stack trace for clips to bounds actually includes a call to masks to bounds. So it makes sense that it would be a little bit slower, because it's basically masks to bounds plus a little bit of overhead. At, at this point, you may also be thinking, but what about should rasterize? Uh, will this solve all my uh, performance issues? Um, so should rasterize is a flag on a CA layer that indicates to the system that this layer should be rendered as a texture off screen, cached, and reused whenever the screen refreshes, so during animations or scrolling. And, but if the appearance of the layer uh, isn't changing or if, uh, uh, changes, or if you aren't animating and you won't be reusing the textures, should rasterize will actually come with a performance hit because it has a high initial setup cost for the off-screen buffer that will cache your texture. Um, 
So this was the result for the layer plus mass to bounds, uh, as we saw before. And this is the result of also applying should rasterize. So as I said, because of the buffer, the execution time goes up. But if you're animating, like scrolling, then and your screen refreshes often, then this may, may help you. Uh, now shadows. So iOS used to be all about skeuomorphism. Notes look like real paper, buttons look like real buttons with the drop shadows helping create a three-dimensional look. Then iOS 7 came around and we threw skeuomorphism out the window and drop shadows went with it. Designers told us that it's all about the blurs now. But now, little by little, uh, drop shadows are creeping in again. We're seeing them in system apps like Music, the best app, and Store. And if any of you are unfortunate enough to work with material design, you definitely get your fair share of drop shadows there. Um, so I will tell you about three ways to draw shadows through CA layer, core graphics, and as a UI image. So the first way would be just to set the shadow uh, properties on your layer. Uh, in addition to setting the shadow properties, you can also specify the shadow path. Otherwise, the uh, path will be inferred from your view's shape. Um, then there's the core graphics approach, which is exactly the same as the code we had before, except now we have a rect that's not rounded, as well as a shadow path. Um, and then there's a sort of creative way of drawing a shadow via a resizable image. And the reason I added this approach here uh, is because when I first started working in iOS, I had no idea that, I, uh, that, UI could that there was any support to draw shadows. So I asked the designer to mock up a picture of a shadow and I put it all over the app without zero consideration for performance. And so as you can imagine, using an image as a shadow is quite slow, then the layer, then core graphics, then layer plus shadow path. It makes sense that when we specify the shadow path, it would be faster than inferring it from the shape, right? So now we talked about corners, we talked about shadows. Putting the two should be together should be easy, right? But it's not. Um, so shadows around the corners are not so easy with layers because in order to draw around the corners, mass to bounds it needs to be set to true, and in order to draw a shadow, it needs to be set to false. So to work around that, we will talk about shadow as a UI view, uh, sh a shape layer, and core graphics. So shadow as a view is just using container view, using its layer to draw shadow, and then adding our view with the rounded corners over top. Alternatively, you can also use a shape layer uh, with a shadow and set its fill color to whatever you want the background color to be. But the issue with this approach is that it only works if you want a solidly colored background. If you want to draw text over top or an image or anything else, it won't work because the shape layer will take over. And the core graphics approach is exactly the same as before um, with a rounded rect and then the shadow. So in terms of the execution time, uh, the sub layer was the slowest, as you can expect. Uh, core graphics was a bit faster. And of course, dealing with a single layer was the fastest. But as I already said, this only works for solidly colored views. Um, so at this point, maybe you're noticing a trend. Whenever UIKit is missing functionality, there are basically two comparable ways we can go. We can either go with CA layer, or we can go through core graphics. And um, every view has a CA layer, so that's easy. Uh, or the core graphics route allows you full control of what you draw. Um, and we talked only about rounded corners and shadows, but you can extrapolate this to borders and to gradients and to whatever effect you want. Uh, and I wanted to draw your attention to core graphics one more time. So it wasn't always the fastest approach, but it's been pretty consistent. Um, for rounding corners or for drawing shadows or both, the difference in results is pretty much a rounding error. So with core graphics, multiple effects can be applied in one go without any implications on performance. Um, now let's switch gears <laughs> and talk about laying out elements and bash auto layout altogether a little bit. Uh, so I will talk about auto layout, uh, stack views, and uh, manual layout. So for this, I drew six plane views, colored their background solid, and stacked them uh, vertically. Um, 
Here's the regular auto layout codes with constraints. Um, so I think it won't be a spoiler to anyone that this will be slower. Um, and this is because Auto Layout Engine is backed by a solver that takes every constraint and translates it to an equation. The more constraints there are, the more complex the equation for the layout becomes. And even the order in which the constraints are added can have impact on complexity. And this is uh, the stack view code, uh, my least favorite UIKit element, in case you were wondering. Um, so you can probably imagine that uh, as it uses auto layout under the hood, you can probably imagine that nesting stack views, because you needed to adjust UI really slightly, can add a lot of computational complexity. And then there's manual layout, which is just calculating the frames and assigning them directly. So auto layout measured in at 14 milliseconds for drawing those six views. Stack view came pretty close with 12. And uh, manual layout came in at just 1.7 milliseconds. That is eight times faster. Um, but this year at WWDC, Apple announced that they have made significant performance improvements to the auto layout solver. I decided to measure this, so now I'm living on beta iOS, so that's been great. Um, but auto layout on iOS 12 actually did measure a fair bit faster, but it is still much slower than laying the views out manually. Uh, so you may be wondering, so what? What's a few milliseconds here or there? Does it really matter? And the answer is sometimes. It starts out with a little bit of text, then you round the corners, you add a shadow, add a border, put a gradient in the background, put all of this in a table view with a thousand cells, throw in some images, and you start noticing that things are adding up and your performance is suffering. So we come to the end. So what is the takeaway here? Should you replace all your UI label instances with core uh, animation, core graphics, or layers? No, probably not. But the conclusions that can be drawn here are that UI kit elements often come with a performance hit because they're feature rich and come with a lot more overhead. Uh, whenever UI kit is missing functionality, the two reasonable approaches to go through are core graphics and core animation. Core animation has nicer APIs, but core graphics allows you full customization. Uh, auto layout is always slower than manual layout. If you're seeing issues when you're scrolling, yet all your cells are laid out using auto layout, then that should be the first thing to go. And ult ultimately, it's up to you which of these approaches meet your needs. If you're not seeing an issue with performance in your app, then you don't need to fix anything. Uh, all of these techniques come with their own trade-offs, and it's up to you. There's not one right answer. On that note, thank you all very much.